So in this first introductory episode to talking about orcs, we're we'll going to be going over the army rules and the index in general. Uh, just kind of a quick overview. So this is the orcs section, which is the first part of index Xenos 2. We do not as of yet have a codex, and it's probably going to be at least two more months from the time of filming this video before it comes out. Of course, we will be switching over to the codex as soon as it comes out. So we just get a couple pages of introduction. What are the orc army, which we already know what are. And a brief overview of the clans, which hopefully will get rules in the codex, just like everyone else is getting. And then we get into the actual orc army list. So there's a couple of really amazing rules here. Um, first of all, we're going to go with, here we go. A unit with this ability can reroll failed charge rolls. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Just a flat out reroll of any charge. Uh, it does have to be, with the fact clarification, it does have to be both dice. You cannot choose one of them. You have to reroll both of them if you're going to use Here We Go. So you can use your command point. If you roll like a 6 and a 1, you can use a command point to reroll the 1 instead of rerolling both. And mob rule. A unit with this ability can use the number of models in their unit as their leadership characteristic. In addition, a unit with this ability can use the leadership characteristic of any friendly orc unit within 6. So there's a little bit of controversy as if you can chain this. So let's say if we have a unit of 30, of 30 here, a unit of 10, 12, 15 here, and a unit of 6 that has to take a leadership. Are they, are they able to use the 30 from here, from over here? Um, in my opinion, no, because this unit is the one that's using the leadership characteristic of a nearby unit. This one doesn't have to. It's not using the leadership, so we, so the uh, uh, mod rule doesn't apply at the moment of have this unit having to take a leadership test. So this one still has a leadership characteristic of 7 because it doesn't need to use the leadership characteristic. So, since this one isn't using a leadership characteristic at the moment, it, it can't, mod rule doesn't apply. That's just my opinion. It's not in the facts. I could be wrong on it. But still, despite that, my rule is absolutely one of the most incredible uh, morale mitigations in the entire game, even after several codexes have been released. And um, having a, having when you have multiple units of 30 boys next to each other, and they concentrate fire on one, you've got a couple models left, there's still leadership 30. That's outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. So yeah, my rule is one of the best rules they could have come up with. No complaints about that. Um, clan keyword. There's also a lot of confusion on clans. Um, it really only applies on certain abilities that require a certain clan. And the paint job doesn't really matter too much. So you, you, could, have, you could say that your entire army is blood axes or goths or whatever, regardless of the paint job. Um, the only difference is that there is a community post, I'll have to find it, where they said that if you have a similar paint job with different rules, that's a problem. So yeah, if you try to have an all, let's say the example you're using, if you have an all blue army and half were ultramarines and half were white scars, that's not acceptable because it's too confusing. You have to differentiate the paint jobs. But then you can use whatever rules you want to the paint job. So don't worry about painting your, your models any particular clan. I mix mine up. I've got lots of different clans in all my army because when you're doing a WA, of course, it will attract bands from all over the place. And so, and they still can't, so in my eyes, they will count as the clan you're playing, regardless of where they came from. Because um, an orc army is always going to be mixed clans because the loot is going to be deaf skulls, the boys are probably going to be goths, and so on and so forth in the fluff wise. So mixing clan paint jobs in your army is fine. Again, as long as you're not confusing your opponent with different paint jobs and different uh, clan rules. When that comes out, of course. Right now, there are no clan rules. That will most likely change in the codex. And then the power of wall. We'll go over this real quick. Power of wall discipline. Three, two really, really good powers. And one, not so much. 
So Edbanger is a warp charge value of 6, manifest roll d6 compared to the toughness characteristic of the closest visible enemy model unit within 9 inches. If the result is higher, the model's toughness it is slain. The 99% of the time, you're just going to take out a, a regular guy, and like 99% of the time, Smite's going to be better So than this. The only time would this would be better is if you got, let's say, a toughness 4 Space Marine character with like 10 wounds or 6 wounds or something like that, like a Primaris Ancient or something. And then if you roll a 5 or 6, you can slay them outright instead of just doing D3 mortal wounds. So that would be, and it has to be the closest model within 9 inches, that character. So that's the only time the Ed Banger would be useful, so which I, which is like almost never. So Ed Banger is probably not too good, except because you always have Smite. Smite's better than this. Warpath. Warpath is great. Charge charge value of seven. A friendly orc unit with six inches gains one extra attack. And it's not orc infantry. It's orc unit. So this is cans, orcanauts, um, whatever you want. Excellent power. And of course, the most important power, the jump. The jump has a warp charge characteristic of seven, warp charge value of seven. If manifested, select a friendly orc infantry. That's the only downside, it has to be infantry. Within six inches of the psyker, remove this unit from the battlefield and set it up anywhere on the battlefield more than nine inches from an enemy model. This unit counts as having moved for the purposes of any rules, firing heavy weapons. So you just so a psyker is basically a shooting unit that shoots thirty boys across the table. The jump is by far one of the most important powers, important things that the orc army has. Really, one of the main things that makes the orc army viable, um, or infantry orc army viable. And you're nine inches away, so you have to roll a nine on your charge. But with Eerie Go and or Command Point, the odds of getting that charge off are extremely good. Way well better than fifty percent. Um, to get the charge off with the jump. And of course, mixing, uh, there's a lot of things you can do with the jump. My favorite thing is use shooter boys. So I jump in a unit of shooter boys with three rockets. So I can shoot the shooters at one thing, rockets at another thing, and then charge a third thing. That's the nice thing about the 8th edition rules, you can do stuff like that. So you jump in, your, all your shooters are now in range of something. You unload with 50 shots, three rockets into something, you might do, some, might do three wounds to something. And then you still get to charge. Most amazing thing, again, mob rule to jump actually makes orcs very playable in this edition, uh, orc infantry. They are still extremely squishy, but we'll go over that later and we get to get to the individual war, um, data slates. But for now, just a quick introduction on the orc army from the index, which of course will hopefully will be updated before too long, but we will go over the data slates in the index and then other ideas as well. Thanks for watching.